Welcome to this lesson. Today we're going to create a visual aid that isn't quite an animation and it's not quite a simulation. We're going to construct a hybrid of the two and you can use these types of visuals in cases where you may be aware of the pre-impact motion and have some indication of the post-impact motion, but you don't necessarily need to iterate the simulations until you converge upon your final solution. You just need a visual aid to show what you know happened without necessarily needing to back it up with a fine-tuned simulation. And in this example, uh, we're going to base this on Fundamentals of Traffic Crash Reconstruction Volume 2 by Daly, Sugamore, and Daly, Example Problem 16.4. And in this problem, two vehicles collide in a T-bone type configuration, which we're going to draw out now. Here we have our aerial, which was imported and scaled properly using the procedure outlined in other uh, videos. So let's go ahead and go to the top-down view and let's import our first vehicle. We're going to use a Mazda MX-5 and we're going to use a Hyundai Accent. So here are our two vehicles. And we're not going to uh, solve the problem itself, example problem 16.4. We're going to save that for another video, um, but we'll just use the solution uh, for the pre-impact velocities. And in that, in that example problem, uh, one just simply uses conservation of linear momentum and with knowledge of the post-impact trajectories and speeds, of course, you can work backward to figure out the pre-impact speeds with some knowledge of the pre-impact trajectories. So we have uh, vehicle one coming in at zero degrees, according to the problem. And let's just draw some lines here for reference. We'll set this line to zero degrees. Let's call this our y-axis at 90 degrees. And let's suppose that the point of impact was somewhere around here at area of impact. So here's our vehicle one here, the Mazda. And the problem tells us that the other vehicle came in at an angle of 75 degrees. And let's suppose the impact orientation is something like this. Okay, and I just want to go ahead and draw the post-impact trajectories are just the angles at least. So I'm going to hide these guys. So vehicle one, according to the problem, goes off at a 30 degree angle post impact. Let's make this for vehicle two. And vehicle two goes off 
at a 33, 30, excuse me, 45 degree angle post impact. So we just have our post impact trajectory lines drawn here for reference. Let me color these cars. Now we don't want to simulate necessarily uh, this collision for this example. Um, so what we're going to do is use the uh, kinematics tool using add kinematics to selection for both vehicles. And what that will do is um, give you the positions of the vehicles as a function of time purely based on uh, kinematics and not based on using uh, the vehicle model itself. And what's nice about this tool is that you can bend the trajectory and it'll put the vehicle at the starting point at the correct configuration that you specified. Now the problem solved for the pre-impact velocities of both vehicles and the vehicle one pre-impact velocity was, ob was obtained and found to be 42.12 miles per hour the pre-impact velocity is 38.96 miles per hour. And you can see the simulator is automatically updating, as you would expect. And you can actually see the vehicles are uh, roughly matching the post-impact trajectories that were outlined in the problem. Now, of course, the particular trajectory that the vehicles will take post-impact is going to be dependent upon a lot of factors including the um, impact geometry, the configuration of the vehicles at impact, uh, the inertial properties of the vehicles, and so on and so forth. And we're not going to worry about trying to fine tune uh, the collision model for this problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, effectively disable the collision model by going to auto EES and changing the coefficient of restitution to minus one and uh, what that will do is it'll turn off the uh, normal component of the impulse that's delivered to both vehicles since the impulse normal component is directly proportional to one plus the coefficient of restitution. If you set the restitution equal to uh, minus one, you basically are turning off uh, the impulse. And you could see now both vehicles just move right past each other and don't interact. All right, now what we want to do is make a clone of both vehicles, like so. Go to uh, Use Copy and Simple Clone. And let's hide the original two vehicles. And when it makes the clones, It, of course, starts them off where the parent vehicles were. And what's neat is you can see the kinematics tool propagating the vehicles forward in time until it meets up with the initial positions of both vehicles. And that will remain the same, um, independent of now what we do with our clones. And what we're going to do is we're going to modify our clones to match the post-impact trajectory of both vehicles. So let's start with vehicle one. So I froze the parent vehicles and uh, froze them and uh, hid them. So we can't modify the data for those. Um, so now we are taking our clone of vehicle one and we're going to input the post impact velocity, which according to the problem is 30 miles per hour. And he has a post impact uh, departure angle of 30 degrees. Mm 
Now you can see that the uh, velo while the velocity vector is 30 degrees, the heading is not. And so we're going to come to what to do with the um, post-impact angular speed. And that's easily changed by using this omega z slider. And you could start refining that as you wish. And now we're going to do the same for uh, vehicle two. And vehicle two's post impact velocity is 35 miles per hour. And now he has a post impact uh, departure angle of 45 degrees, but his heading was already 75 degrees. So we just need to subtract 30 from the angle between the heading and the velocity. Um, angle. So we'll use minus 30 here for the um, velocity vectors angle. And now the velocity vector will point 45 degrees from the x-axis. And of course we need to refine the post-impact <coughs> angular velocity for the car. And that's going to be that's going to be dependent on the um, the uh, area of impact for the vehicles, depending on if it's more forward or rear of the uh, center of gravity of both vehicles. Let's just suppose that um, we have a positive post-impact angular velocity in this case, and so now both cars go off spinning and at the correct post-impact departure angles as specified by the problem. And we can include some braking effects. Now this is where the simulation comes in. We're basically using the tire and suspension models to dictate the post-impact motion of the trajectory, the initial conditions are going to be set by um, setting the post-impact velocities and departure angles for the velocity vectors and the uh, angular velocities. But then every th the simulator will take over and the tire force model and, s and suspension model will take over the rest. So that's why I say it's a hybrid approach. Not quite animation, not quite simulation. And now we can see here that vehicle two comes up on um, this concrete, raised concrete median. So we can actually simulate that. We can include the effect of that like so. Let's make a polyline shape. It's kind of hard to see the exact shape of this guy in our Google earth image, but let's just say it's something like that. Let's make it semi-opaque. And right now it's a flat shape. But we can go ahead and extrude it. using extrusion from shape. And we select a height of six inches. So now we can see that our shape is extruded. And we also see our vehicle two's tires are basically oozing through the volume of the extruded shape. So what we want to do is turn on the um, the physics model for for the uh, the shape, or we want to include the shape in the in the physics simulation. So we make the shape an unyielding uh, terrain, like so, 
And now we can see the vehicle interacting with the extruded shape. And in this case, actually, it looks like the vehicle body hits it and sort of bounces off. And we could play around with reducing the height. So 0.2 feet, basically the polygon just behind the rear wheel was catching the edge of the extruded shape and causing the shell to interact with it. If you lower just a little bit, it'll the extruded shape will fall beneath that polygon and now the wheels are allowed to interact with it. So now we see the vehicle mounting the, the median. And of course you can refine your simulation as needed, the post-impact simulation portion to match your evidence at the scene. Uh, you can inc inc increase the um, amount of braking forces to uh, help modify the post-impact travel distance. And you can fine-tune the angular velocity, whatever you need. But this is a pretty good-looking uh, visual of the accident. So now what you do is you have the pre-impact trajectories and the post-impact trajectories of both vehicles and using a tool like Camtasia Studio you would simply turn off the post-impact portion and render it and, th and then on the next output, you would turn off the pre-impact portion of the trajectory, render that, and splice them together with a tool such as Camtasia Studio. Not too much trouble. And you can see you get a very nice result. Thanks for watching.